And I'm gonna tell you where that spring is sticking. Ooh, sorry. Uh, boys and girls, this is my inspired by someone else that we know of that does cab chats. Uh, I thought it was about time I'd tell everybody how I got the nickname Cutworm. Well, I worked for uh, many, many years at a facility, the largest state facility for mentally and physically handicapped individuals. Uh, it's a wonderful place. It's where angels dwell, both the caretakers and the people that that live there. And uh, worked at maintenance with about 40 other men and women. And uh, I was their auto diesel mechanic for all this time. Of course, I got to do all, all over, you know, plumbing and electrical stuff and roofing and anything that, that they needed done, you know, especially when you're on call. Anyway, uh, when I first got there, it's just like being in a new school. People pick on you and they tease you and I guess to test you, see if you're gonna leave or stay. If you stay, uh, I think they figure that, you know, they'll start to like you. They don't wanna, you know, invest a lot of time and feelings in somebody that just is gonna be there a month or two waiting for a check. And uh, weird as it sounds, that's a way, you know, this particular place does. I don't know. I've never worked that many places. I uh, always had a job since I was 15 and a half. I always worked. And uh, anyway, they picked on me a little bit, and I didn't understand it, being from Leslie, Arkansas. So I started picking back. And uh, I would do little pranks to stuff that they had and to them personally. And pretty soon, uh, they were pretty much afraid to even pick up their coat for afraid there would be, you know, an explosion that would happen or there would be, you know, a snake in the pocket or something like that. And uh, a lot of times they would come into my area where I had my, where my parts warehoused and they would get a part or say, hey, I need this or something. And I knew that where the plate, the thing was going to go, but you know, you know, st stuff like that happens. And uh, I would either change the item out in the box that they needed for the personal vehicle, or I, one time our boss wanted something and I showed him where it was and even put an X on the box because he wasn't very bright. And uh, then he left, and then before the end of the day, I took a chain, you know, I took a, str a string, and I tied that string in around and around all the other boxes that are on this big shelf, and gave him just enough lead rope to where when he got to the door, you know, it, it would tumble toward the whole uh, shelf over, which was pretty funny. I got to work the next day, and he called me in his office, and it was pretty funny. Oh, he, he also wanted me to be very careful whenever I mounted some of his real special tires. Everything he had was really special, and I didn't want no scratches or nothing on him. So I took my time and took the, took the tire machine, and I wrapped all the tools and rags and stuff. was really careful and really polished it back up, and I aired them up right, and I set them outside the door. And then that evening before we left, he went to roll them out to his truck and load them. And uh, somebody had put bolts and nuts inside that tire, in the other tire too, about this big, and all sorts of crud that was put inside these tires and inflated up. I don't know how that got there. Oh, and one of our uh, senior counselors out there, really nice old man, stingy, he'd bring his wheelbarrow tires in there, and instead of buying a wheelbarrow tire, he'd have me air them up and try to fix the holes in it. A wheelbarrow tire is about that thin in the rubber. 
and you can only fix it so many times. So anyway, I said, let me have this one overnight, and I'll try and do something. He was hoping for a new tire. And uh, I filled the, the tire full of quickcrete and let it set overnight. So by golly, he never had another flat, but he was too old and poor and spindly to push his wheelbarrow anymore. <laughs> so uh, I did some jokes on the the biggest guys there, which is makes more sense than picking on a little guy because a little guy will tear you up. And the big guys usually got a big heart. And if you're going to get whooped by somebody, get whooped by somebody big that way. At least you can brag, well, Andre the Giant stomped me. It's better than, you know, Billy Barty really made me yell calf rope. Oh, he's mean. It does make a better story, especially around the deer camp and stuff. But I pulled some tricks on poor old, uh, I've named him lots of names, but he only got to name me once. Uh, he said, uh, after a particular funny joke, I thought, he said, you've got a head on you like a cutworm. Well, that sounded all right to me. And everybody in the whole shop started calling me a cutworm. So I went by cutworm for the last 30 years as far as a uh, nickname or something. And, uh, of course, I called him, you know, Sasquatch and Bigfoot and Corn Fed and stuff like that. That was really funny. So, you know, it's a give and take world. And you just share your love in different ways. And that's the origin of the cutworm. It's nothing to do with the bug or the moth or the worm or the cut. It's just, you know, just payback for being uh, being silly and doing things that I like to do, teasing people. I'm a big tease. If you see any of my shows or videos or YouTubes or any of my comments, uh, the first thing I think of is something humorous. And uh, I think that's a gift from the good Lord to let me see the humor in lots of things. Not everything is, is funny, but a lot of times, even in difficult situations, if I can see a little bit of humor or a little bit of brightness on the other end, you know, I'll try and bring it to light and I'll enjoy it and maybe in, let somebody else enjoy it. So that's the cut worm chat. I hope you liked it. Sorry about that, stealing your cab chat. Watch me get out of this thing. <laughs> mm. They weren't too happy about entrances and egresses in 47. Ah. Oh, that spring is good. Woohoo! Ah. Now, we'll see. Old truck. There's the Dodge. And there's the Crosley. Thank y'all. Bless you.